All right. This is just a uh, not not going to be a super long webinar meeting, whatever you would, you would like to call it. Um, but we're also not going to rush. It's one of those move quickly, don't rush. But Bailey, my marketing uh, director extraordinaire, Bailey, say hi. Are you there, Bailey? Hello, everybody. I'm oh, here. there she is. Okay. Um, you had this. You had this lovely idea that said we should give people a little bit of an overview, whether they're already signed up, so they know what to expect, or they're considering signing up for a model year leadership. You thought we should tell them about it. I give them a little insight. Yes. So here we are. Remodel your leadership is coming up on May first and second. Uh, kind of a reminder, as I have been thinking a lot about leadership in the run-up to this, what I have seen in my coaching is as you kind of, you're starting out your business, some of you may be a little earlier in the process. Some of you may have added some team members. Some of you may have a lot of team members. What I have seen is that as you grow your business and especially as you grow your team around you, whether they are in-house folks, whether they are trade partners, et cetera, a bigger portion of your job starts to turn into leadership and developing leaders and really being concerned with the culture and the feel and the experience that your team members have in your business. If you kind of made a pie chart and you had, you know, a little earlier in your journey in business, leadership's got a little bit of a sliver, but yes, so does sales and marketing and production management and reviewing financials and all of those other areas and leadership as you continue in your in your journey becomes a bigger and bigger piece of the pie, if you will. And I think when it comes to leadership, a lot of times it's a little vague. It's a little hard to really put um, a handle on what exactly does it mean to continue to improve as a leader and also to train up uh, the leaders around you. So that's, that's a lot of um, why this is gonna be a wonderful conference and why it's important. Um, In-person training rocks. Oh, we're on Zoom. Oh, I see you guys. Oh, I see your faces. Oh, yes. Um, but when we're in person, it is just a, frankly, a better experience. Having your team and other team members uh, with you to experience it together is also really helpful for implementation. And we've got signups coming in from around the Fruited Plains in Michigan and California and Colorado and Texas and North Carolina. It is going to be a lot of fun. So a little bit of what to expect. It is on May 1st and 2nd. That's 55 days from now. I think spring is like 14 days from now. Something like that. Whatever that means, wherever you're at. Uh, it's coming up quick. It is at the Guardian Building in downtown Detroit, a super cool, historic, awesome building. You'll probably be distracted and some of you will kind of be late for our 830 start because you're going to be down in the foyer and you're going to be looking at this art and how did they do that and look at the attention to detail there. You're going to have to stay focused and find your way up to the top of the Guardian Building where we're having the meeting. We'll go from 830 to 430 on May 1st. We'll go from 8.30 to 3.30 on uh, day number two. Uh, the speakers. So you see the one on the left. Yours truly, Kyle Hunt, owner of Remodelers on the Rise. And then on the right, his name is Tony Woodall. He is um, somebody I've had come and speak at other in-person events that I've done. I've done a lot of virtual training with him as well. Uh, I consider him a friend and a colleague. And Tony describes himself as a leadership development coach. He lives and breathes and teaches and coaches on leadership development um, all day, every day. That is what his business and the team around him uh, is focused on. I tend to bring uh, a decent amount of energy to meetings in person. I'm maybe even a little more energetic and Tony matches, if not surpasses uh, my energy level. So there will be um, no desire at all to snooze or wow, this kind of afternoon's getting a little long. Mm -mm. Uh, it will be very engaging and you will enjoy his uh, approach, his personality, uh, his, his sense of humor and all of that. Just a little bit about him. Um, a few kind of key sessions on the on the website. Um, you guys have maybe already seen it. We have a nice event schedule that uh, this is kind of the sign up page and info page that just really goes step by step through um, what we're going to be covering. 
But I wanted to hit on um, a couple items. I'll kind of be kicking things off with six characteristics that define great leaders. Kind of set a little bit of a tone for things. You guys will have your notepads out. You'll already kind of be taking notes and maybe getting some takeaways. And I just highlighted a couple uh, slides that, uh, that Tony has already sent over and just to kind of give you a feel for it. So one of the sessions we have are the four rules for group conflict. Mm, even that, just that, that topic and that title and this idea that we are going to be doing some training and discussing how do we handle dynamics amongst the team, people that aren't seeing eye to eye. How do we teach and build up our team members around us? And how do we learn ourselves on how to handle conflict, to lean into healthy conversation around disagreements or challenges we have? I mean, I, it, it's kind of priceless type thinking. If we can all do that better, if we can work on that, if we can learn communication skills there, it's extremely valuable. So I pulled up just two slides related to this, not to spill the beans too early, but it's also helpful for you guys to see it. These four rules for group conflict is number one, don't assume motives. Number two, don't take offense. Number three, listen to understand. And number four, be specific. And I just grabbed one of them, the third one, kind of the listen to understand um, as, a, as another slide, as another part of this, just to give you, again, a feel for it. When we talk about listen to understand, have some rules, have some, some guidelines, some teaching on that. I will not cut you off until you're done speaking. I will ask follow-up questions. I will repeat back what I understood. I will listen until you feel understood. I will let you state your case first. Even just thinking about that and learning this, hearing examples of this, there's going to be time for kind of, I call it batting practice or role playing this. We're going to go into breakout groups to practice it. And you can imagine if you're learning this, if people on your team are coming to this and participating in it, very practical, very practical things that we can take and we can implement. So that gives a little bit of a taste of it. As I mentioned, we'll have time to discuss these, to interact, to practice them. Um, kind of think of this these two days as a little bit more um, workshop feel to it, not so much lecture feel to it. Very practical training that we can truly implement to be better leaders and set a better culture for our respective businesses. Another one we're going to cover is called the nine box shuffle. I mean, first of all, who doesn't want to hear about the nine box shuffle? That's a great title. Hi, Lynette. I haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. I've seen some friendly, friendly faces there. Um, this is kind of leaning into uh, healthy conflict, but talking a little bit more on an individual level. There's going to be a little exercise that we're going to go through where we're going to kind of take uh, our team members that we have and um, kind of figure out what box are they in. And this is based on um, two kind of aspects to it, one being competency. How skilled are they at what they do in their role? And then down here on the uh, X axis, if you will, uh, is related to culture, cultural fit, cultural fit. So over here, you can kind of see, we, we call these people a nice person. Competency wise, low. Skill level in their role, kind of low. But from a culture fit, from a feeling of they, they represent who we are and what we're about and our core values and, and everything that we're about, they're really strong with that. You got people up here in the leader zone where not only are they a great cultural fit, they know who we are and what we're about and represent us so well, encourage everybody around them, but they're also really competent. They're all the way up here in the leader zone. Kind of in between there is the probable leader zone. And then you guys have all met this person. They are the brilliant jerk. Well, Kyle, that's not very nice. Hey, this is Tony's slide. I did not create this. He's the one calling your people brilliant jerks. Uh, but we know who we're talking about here. Somebody that's really competent, but from a culture standpoint, we've got to grow them there. If they're going to stay on the team, if they're going to be a good team member, if they're going to help us continue to grow and be solid with our culture, there needs to be thing, things that we do and that we work on with them. And I just grabbed that slide related to the, the brilliant jerk, quote unquote. The, somebody in this area, we need to focus on behavior modification. 
we need to state the specific behavior that is concerning. When you have somebody in this category, it's really helpful to give specific examples to, of a specific meeting, of a specific instance, of the person, of the conversation, of the words they used. And then number four, state the specific behavior that can replace the damaging behavior, i.e., instead of cutting off the customer in mid-sentence, listen. Listen all the way through and ask clarifying questions to identify where, <coughs> where our team members are and to learn some skills to move them in, into the better direction on the nine box shuffle um, is really good from a leadership standpoint uh, and just from a learning and uh, behavior change uh, mindset. So some of, the, some of these are things that Tony are going, is going to take a, a lead on. He's got all kinds of examples. There's going to be plenty of time for you to ask questions. Hey, what about this situation? Hey, how do you handle it when you sit down and they are just cold to you? They are not interested in improving. How do we approach that? How do we get them to, to buy into what we're saying? There's going to be so much opportunity for us to kind of workshop and to practice things. Um, and as somebody who teaches a lot around marketing, sales process, financials, so much of that is just pretty cut and dry. Here's how you study your P&L. Here's our percentage of gross profit. Here's how we calculate our overhead expense. Leadership it's more touchy feely. Leader people are interesting. People are all different. We are all wired in different ways. And for us to learn how to improve our skills, our communication um, is going to just be really, really valuable. Um, and then one other example, just to, again, trying to give you a feel for what to expect. Um, there's a there's a acronym called CAKE, C A K E. Um, and this is all around improving our communication as well. And I'm just showing you the C. The C stands for curiosity. I don't assume I know what you're going to say. I am present in the moment. I ask you follow-up questions. I listen for the emotion behind it. Bottom line, your presence is not a nuisance to me. Holy cow, if I as a leader am teaching my team this, if I am printing out some of the resources that I learn at this event and I've got it on the wall, even if I'm the only one that goes um, and I've got other team members back, I can see how I can teach them this and we can practice this. If I have other team members that come with me for us to all experience it together is really valuable. Um, or even if you're kind of a solo, solo um, preneur and kind of on your own, learning these skills, how to become a better leader. You can do this with your trade partners. And frankly, a lot of this is just overall ways that you can improve your communication with your loved ones, with friends, et cetera. Okay. So did that, um, did that give a little bit of a taste of kind of what you can expect? I mean, if you don't like cake, I don't know what to tell you. If you don't like the non-bike non -bike shuffle and to think, oh, that kind of brilliant jerk thing, I know exactly who you're talking about, Kyle. And how do we make that better? Um, it's We're going to have a lot of fun. And it's and again, what I'm excited about is it's going to be very practical. Um, breakout group time. We'll have time to practice, hear different perspectives, uh, to learn on implement, work on implementing what we're learning. Uh, a lot of our breakout groups will probably be designed around, hey, we've got a group of lead carpenters. Why don't you guys connect? Some project managers, some designers, some office managers. So we'll probably have some kind of specific breakout groups, which will be helpful. Um, the other thing I would say is um, I've done, oh, I don't know, how many in-person events are we up to? Six? We've done five. five like, or, so yeah. Six. yeah, six six or so where you know we're providing lunch, we're doing the whole the whole shoot and match. Um, I have yet to have somebody that has disconnected from the business, invested in coming to an in-person event and said, Well, that was a waste of time. Um, number one, I just can I go on record and say if somebody comes to this and they and they feel that way it's a total waste of time, I just give them their money back, or should I not say that on recording? I think you can say it. I think that's how I we said work. it because that's what's going to happen. If you come up to me, and be like Kyle, that was that was ridiculously not not cruel, bad bad two days. Well, yes, I will trip over myself to give you money. Um, I don't carry around a lot of cash though. Although right now, I do have forty dollars cash money, which I never have cash. I'm feeling loaded right now. Um, but bottom line is, this will be high value, high energy, 
Um, and it's just, there's something that happens when you disconnect, when you immerse yourself in a couple of days of training, it makes you think differently. It makes you think fresh. It refills your buckets. Does anybody need to get their buckets refilled all day, every day? We're getting drained. We're, we're, we're getting drained from our beloved clients, our beloved employees. Uh, and it's really helpful uh, to kind of get our buckets refilled. And, and an in-person conference like this is a great way to do that. All right, so that gives you a taste of what it's be like. Let me kind of pause, and if you, you can feel free to unmute, or even if you want to just toss something in the chat box, if you have a specific question that is coming to mind before we go through some more logistics here. Maybe I want to unmute and ask a question or type something in the chat box. I will grab them if they come in. Um, so a question of who are, uh, who are you going to, oh, Todd just wrote, I've been to several in-persons with Kyle, always been worth the time and expense. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Todd. Um, so one thing is who, who are you gonna bring? Again, having your team experience it together is really helpful uh, for implementation. As people have been signing on, we've been seeing a lot of people kind of buying a second seat and a third seat. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. A couple other logistical related things will be in uh, downtown Detroit when you are, if you're a big NFL fan, the week prior to our event, uh, the NFL draft will be there. So, so they, will, they will head out of town and then we will come into town. Um, lots of restaurants within walking distance. We've, we'll have a list of all those recommendations. Um, something of note, it's not necessarily tied into our itinerary, but if you, and most of you will, kind of come in on the Wednesday uh, afternoon or evening of April 30th, there is a Major League Baseball game that evening down at Comerica Park. Uh, you'll be kind of within walking distance to the park. I think they're playing the St. Louis Cardinals. So that uh, would be kind of be a fun uh, couple tickets maybe to pick up uh, and to go to the night before. And then we'll be starting on that Thursday morning, May 1st at 8.30. Uh, there's also some hotel recommendations. Hello? Yes. Can I interrupt you for just a second? So we have a typo. It's, it's Tuesday night. Oh, I it's wrote, you know, who, you, know, you know who wrote that in there? I, I added that. That is not on Bailey's. That is not on Bailey. That is on me. I said, oh, I should mention the Tigers thing. Now, why you haven't? Because it'll be in, really fun. Why you haven't logged like into great... Canva and fixed it live while we're doing this? I don't know. Anyways. Okay. Um, so yes, that's two, Tuesday night. I was just making sure everybody was paying attention. Okay. And then we have four hotel recommendations. Uh, when you when you sign up, we'll send you a link to them. They're also listed there. They kind of go from, hey, that's a fine hotel, to the Shinola Hotel, which is pretty swanky. Oh, see, look at ta-da! Tuesday night, four thirty fixed. Once again, remodelers on the rise, showing per absolute perfection in everything that we do. Ta-da. Okay. Um, what's included in your ticket? Two-day conference ticket. Uh, we got coffee breaks and we got lunches that will be delicious. Uh, the networking with your peers is something I think is sometimes overlooked. Um, a lot of you, especially if you've been part of kind of my, my groups or um, on Remodelers Community and my Facebook group, there's probably going to be a decent number of people that, hey, I see that person's name pop up all the time. Uh, so kind of meeting together in person, um, you know, going out of your way to just strike up conversations, having lunch with different people. You know, there'll be some groups that'll say, hey, we're going to so-and-so this evening, you know, tagging along there. The camaraderie and the realizing, huh, I'm not the only one out here doing these things and struggling with this or challenged with that um, can be really, really valuable. So the relationships and the networking is definitely a real thing uh, that will be a benefit. An experience that will improve your company culture and transform your leadership skills. Um, as far as the, the pricing goes, we've got some early bird pricing. Look at that beautiful bird there. Uh, Bailey, you selected that bird. What, uh, what kind of bird is that? It's a remodelers on the rice bird. It's got the, the red, white, and black going. Interesting. It. Interesting. It is a beautiful bird, though. Um, my uncle, did you know that there are such things as birders. He literally has his biggest hobby is traveling around and um, viewing new birds. It is a whole community of people who try to see as many birds as they humanly possibly can. 
and they keep track of it. Who knew he would know what that uh, name of that bird is that you just made up. So the early bird, as I was saying, the early bird discount um, saves you $200. This is for the first seat uh, is 1,297 bucks. Got the early bird pricing through the 15th of March, another week and a half or so. And then if you're bringing others on your team, there is a discounted rate for second or third or ongoing uh, additional seats of 897. So that is uh, how that's working. So definitely take advantage of the early bird pricing. The other thing you may consider, not to add complexity to it, but I have a program called the Remodelers VIP Club, in particular, the Foundations Program. If you are a member of the Foundations Program, you receive one complimentary ticket to the event and a healthy discount on any for future additional seats. So you can you can learn more about if you go to remodelersontherise.com, click on uh, the VIP club, you can learn all the details. But the basic format of it is we have live coaching and training every month around the sales process, marketing, financials, and leadership. And then we also, all of my courses, all of my previous training on a whole variety of topics that is very valuable to the remodeler is also included in the VIP club membership. And it's $4.97 a month and no big long-term contracts. So the thought here would be I'm kind of incentivizing some people who may be wanting to come to the event, but have also kind of considered the VIP club, kind of incentivizing you to maybe uh, pull the trigger on that. So that's, a, that's another part of it. But you can buy a standalone ticket just as, as good as anything. Cool. So any additional questions? This, again, was kind of a 20, 25-minute uh, just little overview of what to expect and how it's all going to work and why you should come. You can feel free to call or text if you have any questions or shoot me an email. Um, Bailey, you might want to, if you want to toss in just for people watching this live, just a link to the Remodeler Leadership uh, conference page. You already did. Rock and roll. Any other questions that I could answer, my friends? Well, that went just like I was expecting it to. Swimmingly, we got the facts out. We got people excited. I saw some people taking notes even. Some of you are already signed up, so now you know a little bit more of the lay of the land. Um, and I think that's, uh, we're going to call it good. Bailey, did I not mention anything that I should have? You mentioned it all. Wonderful. Cool. Thank everybody for dialing in. Reach out if you have any questions. And we hope to see you at the Remodel Your Leadership Conference coming up in 55 days, 17 hours, and some odd minutes. Thanks be there or be square. This is helpful. Great. Thank you, Lynette. Okay, thank Am I going to see you tonight at the Bragg event, Lynette? No, unfortunately okay. not. Okay. All right. I'll be in your neck of the woods. Okay. We'll All see right. you. Be well, everybody. Thanks.